So coming out of the second year, going into the third year, we were really excited about where the business was going. We had just made 137,000. That was the most money we had made to that point. So we were looking at the third year and thinking that, man, this was really gonna explode this year, especially with what we had on the table. I was already training agents, and in my mind, I envisioned having eight agents and those agents working, making money for themselves, and of course, making money for the company as well. So I was like, man, things are really going to take off this year. And also, we had a drayage contract that we were servicing as well, so that was going to provide some consistent income over time, so everything was just looking A-OK. -okay. But then, of course, the year started, and things never end up going like you think they're gonna go. There's always something that's gonna happen that's gonna throw things off. So kicking off year number three, what I realized early on was that I had a lot of work to do. Because when you have agents, you have people that are working under your authority, so you have to train them to make sure that they're doing business according to how you do business on a day in and day out basis, according to a standard, your procedures, the processes that you have in place. All of your processes, all of your procedures have to be documented because remember you're training agents and they need to be able to reference those documents and know how to move a load. They need to be able to know how to go out and get a rate and give that rate back to the shipper. What is the process? How do you go about that? What are the steps? So everything needs to be documented so it can be easily referenced by your freight agents. And all of this responsibility fell to me. Now, the good thing about it was it forced me to get organized in my business. It forced me to go ahead and write out standard operating procedures, to write out my processes, the systems that I had in place to make sure that it was clear so anybody can walk in and pick up a what we call a smart book and go through that smart book and understand how to operate the business. So it forced me to get organized, which was a good thing, but it robbed me of time. And the time that I was spending on my own customer base, it took that time away from me. And now I wasn't paying as much attention to my customer base as I usually am. So I was missing out on some of the loads that I would usually get. Because we would always contact the shipper outside of the tenders that we were already moving and say, hey, you know what? Are you guys moving any loads today that you might need assistance with? Even if we didn't have those loads already, we would always check in to find out what additional needed to be done, how we could provide additional assistance, because of course that means more opportunities and more money. Well, it took me away from that. So that had a substantial impact on my own load movement production. And anytime you start moving less loads, a lot of time what that means is you make less money. So revenue went where load movement went. As I started to have decreases in load movement, my revenue started to decrease. So in year three, we didn't get that big explosion in revenue that I had anticipated. We had spent a lot of time with agents, but when you really start to look at it, the return on investment wasn't satisfactory. So I had to really start to reassess some things moving forward. And although we had a slight increase in revenue from year two to year three, we went from 137 in year two to now in year three, we made 152,000. But the problem was, was we spent a lot more money because we got a new TMS in place. We went from $100 to $500 a month on the TMS. And we also picked up a big customer that was a super big win for us but it also increased our insurance because we had contingent cargo insurance only in the amount of 100,000. Well, this customer required that we have not only contingent cargo, but we also had to have auto liability and commercial general liability. So that would increase our insurance from about $1,300 a year to $5,400 a year. So although we were a bit disappointed with only having a $15,000 increase from year two to year three, it was still a good year because we did get that new customer and that new customer was a game changer. It allowed for us to start accessing freight in a much easier way. And then we had the new TMS and we were able to start moving LTL loads. So all of that was a big positive and it was going to start to move us into year number four. In year number four, I set my sights on a goal of $200,000 in total revenue. Now, when I first started, 200,000 seemed like it was a long way away. But after a few years, after starting to make money, seeing some progress, I thought $200,000 would be 
relatively easy. And the reason why I say easy is because we already had everything in place. We had a customer base in place. We had a new TMS in place. We could move LTL freight more easily now. So I just thought that it wasn't going to be a very difficult thing to do to get to 200,000. And we still had the drayage mission in place. So $200,000 was well within range. Let's see if we hit that number. In video number four, I'll tell you all about it. Look out for that video tomorrow. If you want to learn more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's my five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. It gives you a chance to come into the office with me, watch over my shoulder as I move loads, talk to shippers and carriers. That way you can get a better understanding of how the business works. And just in case you may have missed, Video number one and video number two that details what we were going through in year number one and year number two in our business and how much money we made. You know I got you. I'll leave those two videos right here. Go ahead and click on them now. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.